Okay, in the last uh, exciting episode of uh, creating our own data, uh, I took the boundary map and I, I exported it and created a copy of it uh, and called it Timber Stands Map. And then I used the, um, the chopping tool or the cut polygon tool to chop it into three separate polygons, okay? Uh, that represent three different stands. I then also opened up the database table and created um, two new attributes, one called timber type and the other acres, and then I populated those um, by typing in the type of timber stand it, it is over here, mature, or young hardwood, uh, young yellow poplar, mature oak hickory, and mature uh, yellow poplar. And then I, for the acres, I let it use the um, calculate geometry. I just right mouse click it and calculate geometry, and I made sure it was set to acres. Okay, so I'm going to leave these off to the side right now. I'm going to close that table up, and I want to show how I can go ahead and um, illustrate this map here uh, based on those different timber classes and acres. So the first thing uh, we'll do is we will open up the properties. Okay, you can either double click it or you can right mouse click and hit properties, and the properties windows pops up. And first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the symbology. It's set to single symbol. I want to change that to categories. And I'm just going to let it go to unique values. The value field that I want to use, I want to color it based on timber type. So that's what the, the question I'm going to ask is what are the timber types. I'm going to turn this one off because I don't need that. And I'm going to hit all. Uh, add all values. So I'm going to make the um, I'm going to make the young yellow poplar uh, kind of a, a yellow, a, a kind of a dull yellowish color. Okay. I'm going to make the mature yellow poplar a bright yellowish color. Just pick a nice bright yellow. And then I'm going to take make the mature uh, oak hickory. I'm going to make that red. I'm going to find a red in here. Ah, oh, we'll go coral. I'm, I'm going to actually make it a bright red. Okay, so those are our three different stands. I've got one polygon in each. And uh, so before I go out of this window, I'm going to do a couple of other things. I'm going to set the display of it. Uh, so that the transparency is set to about 60. And I'm going to turn on the labels and guess which attribute I'm going to use to label it with. Acres. Okay. Um, I'm going to make that kind of big number there, 14 or 16. And now I'm ready. I've got all this stuff done. I can go ahead and hit apply just to see how things look. And that's nice. I like it. All right, so I'm ready to hit OK and close out of the properties window. So the next step is uh, I like the fact that I've got the acres written in there, but I would much rather have the, the units in there as well so that people know what these numbers represent. So one thing I showed in class today was I can right mouse click the timber stands and Right here, I'm con going to convert those labels that I've just created into annotation. Okay, so and I want to do that in the map. I don't know why it always defaults to database, but I'd much rather do it in the map. And then I hit convert. So it doesn't look like much happened here, but when I use the little select elements tool, I now have access to... Uh, to this I, and I just double clicked on it and I can edit it now okay so I'm going to do that with all three of them here I also showed in class that because these are now map elements rather than labels associated to the database I could basically um, select all of them by drawing a box around it. And if I hit the delete key, I can 
delete them all, or I can do a right mouse click on one of them and go properties, and I can change the symbol type. I'm just going to make them italicized, make them a little bit larger, and hit OK. So that's how you can do, that's how you can edit a whole bunch of um, annotated labels all at the same time. So notice that they're still selected. If I want to unselect them, I just move away from them somewhere and I just click um, and it, there's nothing to select. So it basically deselects everything. So when I'm ready to do my, uh, my legend, I mean my uh, final layout, this is the way I want it to look. Okay. I probably am also going to change this just real quickly. I just click on it nice and gently, and I'm just going to have timber stands there. And uh, change this to timber type. I might delete one of these later on, depending on the uh, how the legend gets set up. Okay, so pretty good. All right, so that's how you you get your um, use your database data to to classify the information that's in there. And so you can end up with a much, much more uh, 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 useful map. Don't forget to save. Okay.